Okay, we'll be discussing chapter three, cell structure and function. So how are cells studied? The cell is the smallest unit of living things. This is the building block of all organisms. Cells interconnect and perform shared function to form tissues. And then tissues form the organs and organs come together to make an organ system. We have many organ systems and such many systems functioning together makes an organism. There are two broad categories of cells, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Animal cells, plant cells, and fungal cells, and protist cells are classified as eukaryotes. And bacteria and archaea are classified as prokaryotes. prokaryotes. Um, briefly about some information on micro microscopy. Human red blood cells are about 8 micrometers in size, or 10, 8 times 10 to the negative 6th meter in diameter. About 250 blood cells can fit on a tip of a pen. And a microscope is an instrument that magnifies objects. An image from a microscope is called a micrograph. And typically, typically light passes through the slides of the specimen and lens to create a magnified view of the cells. And then stains are used to create better images uh, of the cells and their components. There are two types of uh, microscopes shown here, which we'll use in the lab. Uh, light microscope and dissecting microscope. Here are the eyepieces. Objective lenses are down here, typically on a rotating platform. Objective lens on a di dissecting scope typically aren't moving. And <clears throat> here's the coarse focus, fine focus, but knobs. Zoom and focus knob is located on top and side for the dissecting scope. Um, the stage is at the bottom for the dissecting scope, but stage is in the middle for the light scope, light microscope. Light microscope can magnify cells anywhere from 40 to 1,000 times, whereas dissecting microscope can only magnify 20 to 80 times the object size. Then there's the electron microscope. Uh, we need to use metal and vacuum, so living tissue or living cells cannot be viewed using microscope. So here's, here's an example of electron micrograph showing on top salmonella viewed with a light microscope. Those are the little purple dots, these tiny little dots, right, the salmonella. Bottom shows the same salmonella, salmonella viewed with an electron microscope. And those are the red dot, red rods shown here. So back, a little background info on the cell theory. In the 1600s, Anthony van Leeuwenhoek observed a movement of protist single cell organisms and sperms. And he collectively at the time called call them anima, anim, animal kills. <laughs> it's hard to say that. Uh, in, but in uh, 1665, Robert Hooke viewed a cork tissue and coined the term cell and from the latin word meaning cella meaning small room and by the late 1830s matthias schleiden and theodore schwann proposed a unified cell theory and that's the idea that all living things are composed of one or more cells the cell is the basic unit of life and all new cells arise from existing cells. That summarizes the unified cell theory. When comparing prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, all cell cells share four common components. Uh, one is the plasma membrane, two is the cytoplasm, three is the DNA, 
four is the ribosomes. The plasma mem membrane is the outer covering that separates the cell's interior from its environment. And the cytoplasm is jelly-like region inside the cell where other cellular components are found. Uh, DNA obviously is, obviously is the genetic material of the cell, and the ribosome are the particle that synthesizes the proteins. Uh, so, so what are some components of um, prokaryotes? Prokaryotes, pro before, carrion, meaning nucleus. These are unicellular without nucleus or membrane-bound organelles. And DNA typically is found in a darkened central part, and it's called a nucleoid. And the cell wall is often made up of peptidoglycans, proteins with sugars attached. The cell wall, seen here in this light, light, light green gives it the protection, shape, and it prevents dehydration. And the capsule, which is the outside of the cell wall, enables cells to attach to surfaces because it has these pili and other properties. And some use flagella are used uh, flagella for locomotion, moving around. And most of these pili are used to exchange genetic material during conjugation. And eukaryotic cell. Prokaryotes are typically 0.1 to 5 micrometer in diameter. That's about 100 to 5,000 nanometers, or 10 to the negative ninth. Um, so prokaryotes face easier transport of materials within the cell but eukaryotes ranges from 10 to 100 micrometers. So it makes it more difficult to transport material across uh, the surface using diffusion only. So eukaryotes have many different uh, cell parts. Both animals and plant cells share some of the components. This, those are things like plasma membrane, cytoplasm, cytoskeleton, endomembrane system, ribosome, mitochondria, yes, plant cells have mitochondria, proxisomes, extracellular matrix, intracell intercellular cellular junctions. <coughs> so, <coughs> as you can see, Golgi apparatus and endopl endoplasmic reticulum both smooth and rough, are what makes up the endomembrane system. I think those are uh, more uh, complicated uh, no nomenclature. So that's in plant cell. In animal cells, they're over here. Plus particular. And Golgi apparatus is shown here. We'll go over more of this in detail. So starting with the plasma membrane. Plasma membrane is made up of phospholipid bilayer. It's called a bilayer because there are two layers of it. Here's one on top, here's one on the bottom. And these separate the internal contents of the cell from the outside, outside environment. So plasma membrane also regulates because it's a barrier, regulates the passages of many substances. And intestinal cells, in particular, have plasma membranes that are folded into a thin projection we call we called microvilli. And this increases the surface area in the intestine for increasing the absorption. Now, celiac disease is an immune uh, response to gluten. Uh, is caused by damages done to these microvilli, and that affects how the nutrients are absorbed. Uh, cytoplasm and cytoskeleton. Cytoplasm is this entire thing here inside the cell. 
suspends all the cellular organs, organelles, rather. So, uh, the contents between the cell membrane, which is found in brown here, and the nucleus, which is found in this region here. And all of that is in the cytoplasm. And organelles are suspended in gel-like cytosol, the cytoskeleton, and other chemicals. All these organelles are suspended in that gel-like substance. <clears throat> it's anywhere from 70% to 80% water. And much of the metabolism happens in here, in the cytoplasm. And the cytoskeleton typically are mesh of proteins. They maintain shape, allow transport, and movements. Uh, cytoskeleton in particular are divided into three main types. One is a microfilament. These include actin fibers. These are the thinnest. And the other one is the intermediate filaments. These are things like keratin. And then there are the microtubules. They're the thickest. The thinnest uh, microfilaments they move the cellular components during cell division. And they also form the microvilli that gets damaged in celiac disease. And actin fibers also allow muscle movements. And the intermediate filaments maintain the shape of the cell in general and anchor the, anchor the organelles inside. And microtubules These are the spindle fibers that you see during cell division. Microtubules are the thickest, and they guide and pull chromosomes apart during cell division. And the centrosome organizes the microtubules. And also flagella and cilia are made up of cytoskeleton. Flagella are long, and they're used for uh, movements in organisms like euglena. Cilia happens to be shorter, and they're, but they're also moved for, uh, used for movement, and they're found in organisms like paramecium. And the endomembrane system. This is, endomembrane system is made up of a whole bunch of membrane-containing organelles. And these modify, package, and transport lipids and proteins. And in all, they include start, they start with the nuclear envelope, include lysosomes, various vesicles, endoplasmic reticulum, and Golgi apparatus. Here's a nucleus, found membrane, nuclear envelope, and the rough ER surrounding the nuclear envelope. The Golgi apparatus, that's processing and packaging various proteins, and some vesicle can be seen here. So starting with the nucleus, the nucleus has the DNA inside in the form of chromatin and directs the synthesis of ribosome and proteins. Ribosome is synthesized in the nucleolus. It's a dark, re it's the dark region that makes ribosomal subunits. And the nuclear envelope, nuclear membrane, with nuclear pores, is the outermost double membrane structure. And the pores, nuclear pores, allow passage of ions, molecules, and RNA, which makes sense. Otherwise, RNA wouldn't be transcribed and transported out of the nucleus. So the outermost boundary of nucleus is the nuclear envelope. Notice that the nuclear envelope consists of two phospholipid layer, uh, an outer membrane and the inner membrane, in contrast to plasma membrane, which only contains one phospholipid bilayer. So what does endo endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes do? 
and the plasmid.